Movies Podcast, and we are here for the penultimate uh, edition of the season of the Good Witch Podcast. We're very excited to talk about this episode, episode nine of this season, season four, and uh, it's how to make a Middleton quilt, and we're going to be having lots of wishes. It's very exciting, and I'm Rachel, and Amber's here. Hello, everyone. I'm back. You've missed me. <laughs> no? Okay. Darn it. And Georgia is here. Hi. Yay, oh, thank you, Georgia. Is back together. This is so exciting. Ayo, ayo, ayo. <laughs> Merrick family reunion. Yes. We're all Merricks. Don't tell our moms. <laughs> Would never. Yeah. Here we go. So let's talk about this episode. Uh, so this episode sort of revolves around wishes and this wishing quilt. And my first question I want to ask is. Have either of you ever made a quilt? And <laughs> and uh, are you like crafty at all? What about you, um, Georgia? Oh no, no. <laughs> my my poor mom. My mom's like an amazing. Like she sews. She used to make costumes for a theater. Like she's fantastic, and she's tried for so long. My aunt makes quilts. Like we all have baby quilts from her, and I'm like I. I I can do cross stitching, but it takes me like a month to do one thing. And I end up so frustrated because it's all, it's all so particular and it's all, it's everything's so tiny, like the tiny stitches and everything. Yeah, no, craft stuff is, is not, it's not my specialty at all. I like it and I really admire people who can do it, but it is so not something that I think is for me. Yeah. Amber? I feel like crafting and all of that stuff is a perfect like symbol for my life which is like I, in all aspects of my life I'm like pretty proficient I could like brag about the thing that I've done and like it's only worthwhile to me if somebody's like good job and also I don't actually really enjoy anything I just like the praise so like that's that's crafting for me like yeah. you give me some like freaking doily I'll doily it up and it'll be like great I could sell it on Etsy for like the median price but like it's not amazing and I would never like want to do it but like if you made me you guys would be like well she did it yeah in my long story short I'm very just middle neutral yeah. Yeah. So it might surprise you with all the editing that I do, which is very labor and uh, which is very laborious. I'm not that great with patience and most, most, <laughs> I was patient person in the world and most craft things like quilting takes a lot of patience. So it's not my forte. And, uh, and my mom is like the best at this kind of thing. So great. It's like, she's the, like, knitting queen she knits like amazing things she's got like a whole sewing room in her house she's an amazing sewer and me it's just like I get frustrated and I'm like Shh! and it ends up looking terrible because I just like <laughs> so I am not good at crafting or uh or any kind of I have a terrible black thumb I any I should never have a pet because my luck with plants Keeping them alive is very bad. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, so I, I, I either so you're a plant murderer, Rachel. Overwatering or underwatering, or it's just a disaster. So, yeah, it's it's my 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 mom uh, did not pass her uh, many making wonderful skills over to me. Uh, <laughs> but I always find it interesting when they say it's relaxing. They always tell you to take up knitting, like it's a or, or any kind of crafty thing. And I ended up like for the royal weddings, we make our hats, our fascinators. Mm -hmm. oh, and everyone's yeah. like, oh, we make like this, you know, elegant, delicate ones. And I'm like, glue everything on there, and it's going to be like jam packed <laughs> with just yeah. stuff, stuff that represents how I feel about it. And it ends up being just, I mean, I love it, but it's kind of a mess. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know how this is like honestly how it's relaxing or a downtime for anyone to me it is it's like a competitive sport and so I, I yeah. go for it if, if it if it's your thing but I don't understand yeah. it really yeah I, I I just can't it's we weren't helping with the cool TV and I just <laughs> love Grace so much because I can't think of any other teenager that would be like I got to spend the whole night multiple nights 
with a bunch of old women <laughs> making a quilt that was super fun. <laughs> like she is so special. <laughs> Uh, most teens wouldn't love that. To be fair, there are only seven teenagers in the whole town. Yeah, right. And one of them's 26, apparently, so yeah. it doesn't really count, right? Who's 26? Right. Courtney. The Courtney? Plays Courtney's oh, she's, she's like 46. <laughs> no. Stop. Don't hate Courtney. She's not even in this episode. Okay? Well, she, her presence was there, just <laughs> oozing away the, the joy that I was feeling. Good lord. I did love, today. so we have, we have, uh, we have Martha coming into the store at the beginning and <laughs> that show was really funny. Cassie's like, we've got a customer. This was a really good Martha episode, I thought. And, uh, and she's like, drink some tea and light a candle and it'll perk you right up. <laughs> like, I thought that was funny. And basically she's in the shop because she's looking for a purse to wear to uh cassie's wedding uh but she somehow gave away the purse that would have been perfect do you guys care about your purse coordinating with your outfits uh okay first of all 95 percent of the time my purse is actually a fabric trader joe's bag like, <laughs> rachel knows this is a true story <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it, Amber. The other 5% of my life, my purse is somebody else's purse that I'm making them hold all my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. even no, a lie. Totally. Yeah. totally. If you don't have pockets, everyone has to carry your stuff. And they don't even invent pockets for I women. Know. They're yeah. like, oh yeah, women can wear pants, but they better not have pockets. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing. It's the Completely. dumbest thing. If Will there was a politician who was like, I am going to make there be a legal mandate that every item of clothing, shirt, pajamas, yes. pants, nightgowns, dresses, is. is required to have one pocket, I would say, I don't care what any of your other policies are, you're in. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. in. A little extreme, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> it's the, what is my, my most passionate thing yeah. in the whole world yeah pockets Priorities, amber like it's okay that's okay know, pocket stance would be pretty high up on my list as well if that could be a real platform because <laughs> <laughs> it's so irritating I you're hate. still young georgia you don't understand how how truly important it is yeah you don't understand how many pairs of pants I have that I'm like, why are there no pockets on these yeah. things and everyone carries my stuff do you know what I use as a purse most of the time a no. Lizzie McGuire backpack. That's okay, like, well, that's just oh. bragging. <laughs> <laughs> People think I'm 11. They give me, it's like a, a pass or something. Oh, kids are 11 and under. They're like, kids tickets are this much. I'm like, why would you tell me how much kids tickets are? And I look at my backpack. I'm like, oh, God, because you think I'm 11. I have one purse that's black. That's like a uh, mm -hmm. duffel bag kind of purse. It's like it's huge and fits everything in it. And I can take it if I want to have like candy in my bag when I go to the movies. It's like, it's no problem. I can have my phone and my charger. I, I can get everything in. That's what I usually use. But I do have one nice purse that I got when I was in college and I never use this. So it's really stupid, but I would like to save it for special occasions. <laughs> so I guess that would be my wedding purse, which is ridiculous. But I got it because... Yeah, I mean, it's really sad because Kate Spade, you know, just passed away. And so I got it out recently because um, uh, I got it uh, in um, t like 2001. And mm -hmm. uh, and it was, she was like such a big deal. And me and my roommate just like loved her designs and loved her. And my roommate had like all of these different Kate Spade bags and it was super like amazing. So I went to, uh, I went to New York and there was this place, Eileen's Basement at the time. And you could get everything for super cheap at Eileen's basement. And I went in and I got this Kate Spade bag for under a hundred dollars. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like a real find. And I was so excited. And I just always just not wanted to use it very much because I wanted to stay pretty and not get a, I don't know, it's stupid, but anyway. That's, not so that's stupid. That's not stupid. That's, it's cute. It's nice. Cause it's special. Yeah. But that's it's my. Magic. Yeah. What's that? It's magic. Magic. Yeah, it's a ma it's a wishing purse. No, it's not. Okay, but that's as close as I get to 
a special purse, but it's, it's kind of like a light brown. And so like it goes with everything. Mm -hmm. Looking through, there's this box of stuff from the drama club and there it is, the purse. It was pretty exciting. So that sort of gives you a feel for what is going to happen. Abigail is looking for a house at the beginning of this episode she wants to she's figuring it's going to be awkward if she's at gray house when sam moves in do we know that sam is moving in sam and nick i guess are both moving in they haven't really talked about that mm -hmm. i guess it's just assumed yeah no they i mean they mentioned it in this so i guess they've talked about it but like mm -hmm. with the house so it was oh maybe abigail's gonna move there i don't know well, yeah, Abigail is moving, right? She's what, finding a house. Is he going to sell the house? Like, you have to sell the house. Is you're just going to keep it? Are they going to have two houses? Like, so Abigail might get maybe. Sam's house? Maybe. It would make sense, sort of. Yeah, that so they don't be. have to find a new set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she probably yeah. got his furniture, but maybe. Who knows? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. And so uh, she asked Brandon for advice on a house. And, uh, and he, uh, and then he, he tells her that, you know, people just love living in Middleton and I love useless Brandon. He was like, yeah. basically anywhere is fine. Yeah, right. Brandon, love you it. and your uselessness. Love ya. <laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah. So then we have the women at this quilting thing. Martha brings up the four somethings and yes. what are the four somethings, Amber? The four somethings are something old, something new, something borrowed, and something pink. <laughs> JK, so, it's blue. Everybody knows. <laughs> so what do you think about this tradition? I love it. I, I tweeted this on the thing. Maybe I didn't. I just thought it. I But one of my favorite things about like wedding movies is how they like figure out some way to do the something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Like yeah. in, even in the Friends episode where... Chandler and Monica are going to get married. Fun. I just kind of like that. It's a, like an easy tradition that makes any sort of thing feel more traditional and more fun, but also like they can get super creative with it or super like touching and whatever. So yeah. I just really like it. What about you? For my something borrowed and something blue, I'm going to take your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and wear it we'll see i don't know i do love this t-shirt but um <laughs> georgia what do you think about this yeah so, i like it i mean i but i like you know wedding stuff in general so i think it's really uh -huh. cute um i i don't sometimes i have a problem when they combine too many things and they're like it's your something old and something borrowed and something blue and i'm like then that's just one thing oh, all in the same item but yeah all in the same yeah. thing and i just i don't know why because i'm like it's supposed to be four things and if you have to combine two of them fine but when you're just like cram it all together it's mm -hmm. no I'm, I'm not a fan of that because i like it to be traditional so yeah that's just me agreed yeah, i do agree with you all right so we find out so yeah jared is there and he's so fun he was he got some good time in this episode which i enjoyed He's just uh, the best. He's, he's all talking later on. He's all talking about his, he, he's got to hit him and his precious cargo when he's got to be alert when he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We're like, oh. um, so we find out that there is a day spa opening mm. in, uh, in Milton, which is very exciting. Uh, do you guys like going to a day spa? What do mm. you think? It depends on what I'm doing at the day spa. <laughs> I do love to get massages. It's like my favorite thing, but, uh, but I don't, I can't afford to get them very often. But I, do, I do not like to get massages. Uh -huh. I don't really love people touching me, especially strange people. <laughs> it's just not my jam. Uh -huh. What's the opposite of my jam? My unjam? <laughs> my clear? <laughs> do you like getting just like a pedicure though? That's fun. I mean, pedicure. Yeah. But it's like, uh, you're gonna work like I'm very serious I don't love and like I don't know maybe a manicure fine but mm -hmm. like because that's like a handshake right how do you do, right. do, you do? <laughs> that doesn't feel personal uh -huh. and feet don't feel personal feet feel like a chore like a massage is like oh yeah and I'm like no way get away 
one time for my birthday, my friends gave me, not, they didn't give me a massage. They gave me a certificate to go get a massage. And I went and I was just like, I don't like it at all. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, well, I'm keeping literally all of my clothes on. Thank you. <laughs> I am not a massage person. Yeah, I love it. I think it's so relaxing. But in, in, in fairness, my friend is a massage therapist. And so I just go to her. So I've never really been to a stranger. Ooh, it's not my favorite. <laughs> uh, Georgia, what about you? Do you like going to the day spa? Uh, well, uh, it's, I guess I have to confess that I've never been. Mm -hmm. ever. Um, you never, what about manicure or pedicure? Not once in my life. Never. Wow. Never. I, my uncle was a massage therapist. And so if, I like, if you had a really bad headache, we try to fix your neck basically. But that mm -hmm. was like twice in my life. And then I've been to physical therapy where they give me massages, but that's for an injury or, mm -hmm. you know, something along those lines. So no, I've never manicured, pedicure, massage, anything at a spa. I've never. So if anybody listening wants to sponsor Georgia, getting her first <laughs> manicure and pedicure. <laughs> Take Go for it, and I'll tell you if I like it or not. Pretty fun. I, like I like it. Punching me, but yeah. Um, but what okay, so uh, this is they are very excited about this, and uh, and I did like Sam ask, is there a difference between a quilt and a blanket? Is the and only then, difference between a quilt and a blanket is that the is the quilting? Yeah, it's the quilting. But Grace is like, a quilt has baby socks on it, and I was like, uh, no, not all quilts have baby socks on them. Yeah, just because that was her patch, and she was making it all about herself, you know. Yeah, like yeah. no, for real, a well, quilt is something that has quilting inside the middle of it to keep the yeah. batting and all the stuff together. Well, Whereas I mean, a blanket, really, a blanket. She's not, she's not really making it about herself. I was kidding. I she, know. She's cast. It's like. You'd have to have a square about Cassie's child on Cassie's quilt, uh, and um, and especially if you have a Nick square. <laughs> yeah, what the right? heck was that for? <laughs> and since when? Did, like, I know Nick plays basketball at their house, but like, why does Nick have a basketball? Is he on the basketball team? And then why were Brandon and Lori not on there? If you're gonna well, have Brandon a Nick and Lori are her adopted children, but like, but she should have had like a Brandon Lori square. Yeah. Although I was so happy that they were like. Oh, we have to invite Brandon and Lori. And I was like, and Lori! <laughs> you guys forgot all about Lori. Yeah, yeah. They mentioned her and I was like, oh. Isn't she not coming? Lori. I don't know. They no. didn't say. But they she... said that they were going to invite her. I thought yeah. I saw that. I don't, I don't know if she's going to come. Uh, but but they haven't even sent out invitations yet. So how would I'm they saying, know? Just saying, yeah. I don't know. I just thought I heard that she wasn't coming. Whatever. It's if not me. If it. Lori shows up, I will legitimately sob buckets. You're like already crying. Yeah. Oh, and I love Lori. Yeah. I just, I, in all the, I can't remember if it was Twitter or Facebook, somebody was like, oh, she's not going to be. And so who knows? Maybe they don't know anything about it. So like a human or like someone on the show? Just a human. <laughs> Yeah, they don't know so, like, anything. People had like they had like links to stuff, and I didn't click on them, so I don't know what it was. But I, I might have been Ruth. <laughs> Ruth could know. Ruth is no mere yeah. human. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, so here we go. So they all start making their wishes. Let's talk real quick about each wish. So we have Cassie makes her wish that uh, her friend Melanie, she will be able to see her friend Melanie, who she hasn't seen since college, mm -hmm. and so there's that. And then you have the secretary girl, who I can't think of her name. She wishes... Eve. I love Eve. <laughs> She's super cute. I just can't think of her name. Great. But she is sick of this broken printer at the office. So that's a pretty boring wish. But that's what she wishes for. And then you have... Uh, Cass you have... And then you have Martha wishing for more time. And you have Grace wishing that the, these dogs that are uh, looking for homes that her friend is fostering, she's hoping that the dogs will find a home. So that's her wish. And then you have Stephanie wishing that she can get a chauffeur because she's tired of her friends driving her around. Why do we know why Stephanie can't drive? I feel like she's definitely had a car before because I've seen her loading like cakes into it. So maybe it's just in the shop. Amy, do, do you remember that? Anything, Georgia, about why she can't drive all of a sudden? I was wondering that, too. I didn't know if there was some, some way I had missed something about her not 
not having a license or not having a car or what was going on. And just no. saying this, remember Martha's son wanted to start an Uber in, uh, whatchamacallit? Well, and they're like, them. probably not a market for that in Mer in Middleton. Well, uh, look at your market growing, buddy. Yeah. Stephanie doesn't know how to drive a car now. Yeah. She's yeah. got TV-induced amnesia, so let's do this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, you, you, so what do you, do you have any thoughts about any of these other wishes? What about uh, Cassie and her friend Melanie? Well, if that is literally all Melanie's in the show, uh, it's like, why <laughs> did this exist? <laughs> so I really hope that there is a bigger payoff to the Melanie introduction. Because if it's just like, ah, ha, 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 I'm here for the last three minutes of the show. Well, and, and she's not even going to be there. She said she has to go the next day to go to Cambodia. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's a really short trip for this <laughs> to go. Yeah, yeah um, and like, I mean, and like they got Lauren Holly to come in for two minutes. Like, yeah. what? That seems like a waste of Lauren Holly. Yeah, agreed. I thought it was a little strange myself. Uh, you do have a, <laughs> a one of the classic sort of good witch scenes where uh, where Ca Cassie uh, is uh, is sitting at the diner. I mean, at the bistro, and Martha comes in and asks her if she has the salt for uh, her husband, the pink salt, and she's got it right there in her bag. And they say, "How did you know to have that?" And she's like, "Well, it wouldn't have." <laughs> I would need to be in a bottle. I would just fly through my fingers. And yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was classic Good Witch, I thought. That was kind of fun. So Abigail's wish is that she can make friends. And basically. And uh, so Martha is has all the stuff to do. And she says, Abigail, will you go and play Pinochle in our game? And uh, so Abigail goes and is like amazing at this game. Have you ever played Pinochle? No, and I kept trying to tweet about it, but I couldn't figure out how to spell it and I didn't have time to Google. And I was like, it's not Pinnacle. And the only way I could think of a spelling it would be spelling it Pinnacle. So I just quit and I didn't do anything about it. I was like, the storyline is dead to me because I don't know how to spell it. Uh, P-I-N-O-C-H-L-E. I think that's how Like Pinocchio? Yeah. <laughs> that feels like a lie. I'm That's how I it. think it's spelled, but I'm not a spelling whiz. But have you ever played it, Georgia? No. no. Yeah. My I, I stars don't. and garters, you're right. I know what it is. Look at me, my spelling <laughs> abilities. Have uh, you played it? I have never played it, no. Oh, okay. It's a trick-taking game, typically for two to four players and played with a 48-card deck. It mm -hmm. is derived from the card game Bazik. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I am in for Bazik. <laughs> there, there's like a cool, which itself is derived from Piquet, yeah. which because I think I, is the end. I have no idea. Etymology to... of card games. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how to play Pinochle, but it does seem like the kind of thing that uh, Abigail would be good at for some reason. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know why. It just does. <laughs> well, it's about tricks. I, for some reason, I think of Pinochle and Bridge in the same family. Of Have games. you played Bridge? I've never played either, but I just think it's the <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have an online ladies card game night. We'll invite Ruth. She'll beat us all. It'll be so yeah. good. Right. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So Abigail goes to play Pinochle. And uh, so Tara, we find out, has uh, her master's degree and was going to get her PhD. Uh, and she really liked working in the lab. I don't know what her job is at this current time. I guess she, you know, she's working for Cassie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And, yeah, and I mean, and we do know that she gave up going to school. I mean, that was like first right. season drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she loved doing lab work. And so that's her wish. And like I said, Martha wants more time and Grace wants a place for the foster dogs. And uh, so we find out that uh, we end up at the hospital and Sam sees Tara there all in her scrubs and everything. And she says, how'd you get this job? Turns out they found her resume from some, some big pile and Cassie made a, uh, Cassie 
got involved in some way. And Tara got her dream job as a lab assistant. So there you go. Yeah, I, I do, I do want to say, I feel like, you know how like a magician never reveals his tricks, uh-huh. you know? I feel like we got to see like a little bit behind the curtain on Cassie's like actual meddling. Yeah. I don't know if I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she had to get the job. No, I know, but like not just like I fine, like she meddles and gets people's jobs, we get it. But I feel like Sam was like, I'm gonna Sherlock Holmes to the bottom of this. <laughs> and so we kind of had to see like, oh, so Cassie Mm-hmm. like went to this person found out they had this job opening figured out where her resume was did like he was like it took away some of the magic oh i see what you're saying yeah. i see what you're saying yeah you're i thought it was weird. opposed to what she's doing you just would rather not know about it yeah we did that another time this season with the whole uh with the whole blairsville guy and the shakespeare girl Mm-hmm. And she, you know, Cassie's like there in the corner, like watching it, make sure it all goes as planned. I was like, that's really weird because usually she just plays kind of naive and like, oh, yeah. oh, you met? Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> it's like Sam being in on the schemes with her is ruining the magic because yeah. now we're just like, well, it's just actually a lot of like stocking and work. Like, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I cared about people enough, I could easily do this. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the so Martha yeah wants more time and uh sh- and she's there they're there in the market or whatever and uh Jared's phone just keeps buzzing 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 oh that canceled that canceled that canceled and uh, she ends up having the whole day free so it's very exciting and uh, and uh, so that 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 was kind of fun that's like magic they you know so this is one of those that was well well done magic and. They're so cute together, Jared and Martha. Jared and Martha are the best. Yeah. yeah. I love Jared. Like, I miss Derek so much. Yeah. But Jared makes things a little bit easier to bear. And I would love, love if season five or even just, like, the Halloween movie, we were able to have Derek and Jared both, like, together being like, hey, (laughs) that's my Martha. Like, that would be really fun. <laughs> love yeah. that. Agreed. But that's just mostly because I just want more Martha and everyone to realize how valuable and amazing she is. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, she was just so fun, I thought, this episode. She was really funny. Every line that she gave, Catherine Disher was just great tonight, I thought. Uh, so, okay. So then this is right around where we get our Liam being weird thing that we talked a little bit about earlier. So... <laughs> Yeah, so he tries to talk to her once in her, tries to talk to Abigail uh, once, I think at Grey House and then then at her store. And uh, it's like super awkward and weird. And and then finally he talks to her and he's like, oh, so do you think that Stephanie would like me? I mean, what, is he 11? Because like Stephanie has given him plenty of hints, I feel like. To show, no. like, just in the yeah. last episode, she was, like, lingering when they were getting a drink at that at that uh, classical guitarist thing, and mm-hmm. he had a date there, so, like, what? What? Yeah. So, like, yeah, he's not afraid to ask people on dates, because clearly he had a date, and then yeah. also, like, he's a grown-up, so why do you have to ask her friend? And if you have to ask her friend, like, where you're like, oh, I gotta get you into the secret place, it's gotta be super secret. Oh my gosh, on the down low. Oh, like, grow up, you baby. And it made me so mad because, like, even I knew the whole time that, like, he doesn't like Abigail. He's like, Stephanie, this is going to be some stupid thing. But it was making me so mad because there is literally no other interpretation that Abigail could have had because yeah. um, presuming he's not. 15 years old right like yes. this is definitely yeah. some co- sort of shenanigans that some high school boy maybe elementary school yeah. could yeah. do like being like oh do you think that it, he, he isn't even like uh, do you think uh she likes me or anything like that like he was like <laughs> so i just came because i wanted your opinion and i value our friendship so much and you're so beautiful and so great and here are these roses and these chocolates do you think that stephanie would go on a date with me if I asked. <laughs> like, it reminds me of like, the worst. I, I was mocking Nick earlier this season for doing the same thing and being like, Grace, can you find out if 
Kara or whatever her name was, can you find out if she likes me and will go to the prom with me? I'm like, that one. And I was mocking him for that. I'm like, just no, ask yeah. her. And this but is I like, wanted to, I really wish, I really wish that Abigail, if he was like, do you think that if I asked Stephanie out on a date, she'd say yes? I'd really love if Abigail had said, you know, that's probably a question you should ask Stephanie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because honestly, I, I know he said, oh, sorry to be so high school about this. I'm like, okay, fine. Oh, he's acknowledging it. How big of him. But I'm like, legitimately, I love that Abigail's supposed to be like growing and everything. It's just, it's great. Character development and all that. But seriously, that's such a lame thing to do. To be like, hey, 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 I need to talk to you in private. Uh, will you, can I ask your friend out? And it's like, okay, yeah. And, but then she has to be all gracious and nice and talk up Stephanie. I'm like, he already likes her. So why does she need to say anything? Can't she, like you said, just be like, why don't you just go ask Stephanie? Why do I need to be involved? Like, it's yes. so, oh, I don't it know why they have to do this so to Abigail. Why they have to do this to us. Abigail deserves better. I, I'm sick of it. I'm, this has been like a whole season of just putting Abigail, just like squashing her, and I'm sick of it. Unsquash yeah. Abigail. Seriously. It was. Don't make her weak. Bizarre. Don't make her like, mm, okay, yeah, Stephanie's. Like, yeah, I know she loves Stephanie now and all that, but like, God, she still has a spine, you know? Yeah. Like, she still great. can stand up for herself. Liam's being a jerk. Oh, it made me mad. It made me yeah, very mad. It was really weird. It was very awkward. It had to be like a, a real, like, hardcore date. It could just be yeah. like, you want to meet me for drinks or for ice cream or whatever they do in Milton. Yeah. I, it, it's it's ridiculous and so, it was anyway, so unnecessary yeah it yeah. can even be let's meet for coffee uh you know because yeah it doesn't even have to be a full date it could just be a step up date yeah you, you know? could literally just come in when the bistro is closing and be like oh can we just have like coffee with the two of us or something yeah. and be like oh okay yeah that's fine totally casual yeah. but no you have to go drag abigail into the <laughs> I don't know why I have to, I give dating advice to these people. <laughs> I'm the last person in the world who should be. It just seems obvious to me. Yeah. But, but anyway, so basically things start sort of falling into place. We find out that, yeah, that Martha gets the whole day off, that the printer gets fixed. Uh, and, um, uh, and that Abigail becomes like super great at Pinochle and she's into the, um, uh, the rotation. It was kind of funny. I expected Martha to make a little bit more of a stink when she told, uh, when she, when Abigail told her that, that she was in the rotation, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, she, but basically she was just kind of like trying to be nice. And then she was like, watch it. <laughs> don't push, don't push it. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that was kind of funny. And uh, yeah. And then we have the final part of the episode was this dual bachelorette bachelor party where you have Sam getting invited to the bachelorette party and, and Cassie going to the bachelor party. And uh, what, what did you think about this kind of dynamic of having Sam hang out with the girls, Cassie hang out with the boys? what did you think, Amber? Um, I liked it. I thought it was fun. Um, I thought it was mostly hilarious because stupid Sam like I felt like Sam was kind of like oh what are all the guys doing without me and like it was kind of funny and I loved that about it uh -huh. um but mostly I just really loved the aprons because the aprons were a hoot yeah and I do like that Sam was kind of like well crafts are fun and then I did super loved that she was hustling the guys in yeah. pool like yeah. everyone wouldn't have known I'm, I'm just like the only thing that I didn't quite believe is that Brandon didn't know. And so, like, the only way I can justify it is being, like, Brandon's in on the hustle. Mm -hmm. But he still went in on the bet, so I don't think that he was, but whatever. I mean, that's it was literally amazing. what I said as we were watching the episode. I was like, how in the world would Brandon not know? But Fun. And you have the whole thing with Sam learning how to make this special cake, too. Which, by the way, in my opinion... They picked the, I, I, I agree with Sam as far as cake choices. I think that yellow cake chocolate frosting is the best cake. It's not, because chocolate, chocolate, too much chocolate. But yellow cake with chocolate frosting is just like enough chocolate. But not Rachel, too much. everyone knows you're insane, which is fine. This is the best cake flavor. And so I agree with Sam that this cake looked delicious. And so he, yellow cake is the worst. No, you're wrong. It's, no, the best it's, cake is either super insane chocolate fudge no. or white cake. 
No, 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 no. You want to have it because a yellow cake basically tastes like butter. It's delicious. And, uh, and it has chocolate. George, I come down on this side of the argument. All right. I, I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I like all kinds of cake. I hate frosting. Give me whipped cream on chocolate cake and that's, that's it. I'm good. I'm happy. That's all I want. I do not want globs of frosting on any kind of cake. But if you're going to put it on any kind of cake, I prefer chocolate because chocolate's just the best. Chocolate like it's just and really chocolate, good. chocolate frosting and chocolate. Well, because then I scrape the frosting off because I don't like frosting. So it really doesn't matter to me at all. It ends up just being the cake itself. There are some frostings which are gross. Most store-bought cakes have terrible frosting because it's like that, it's that Crisco shortening it's all like type. Crunchy and yeah. Yeah, but like homemade Delicious. Butter. What's wrong with you? It's delicious. Ugh, I hate frosting. I think frosting with the shortening, I'm with you. The only reason they use it in commercial bakery is because it holds its shape super well. And so if they're, well, they want to have a cake out there like all day, then yeah. they, so they put the, the shortening in, but it doesn't taste very good. But uh, yeah, that's my opinion is that yellow cake, chocolate frosting, that is the ideal cake. I agree with Sam. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, so this is his, and so Stephanie teaches him how to make this cake. This is pretty yeah, she does. There you go. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> and he was pretty excited about it. And um, yeah, so, and then we get, we also get uh, the the little, little scene with George and looking for the, um, uh, he's putting on clips on the um, curtains. And, uh, and then we get the presentation of the quilt, but we don't have clips, uh, clothespins. And so the, he gets the hair clips. And so we get our final thing, Melanie shows up. So that's exciting. And we get our four somethings, where it's the uh, Elizabeth Merriwick handkerchief. Mm -hmm. This is something old. The, uh, the um, what's it called? It's not a mask. It. It's a, what's it called? The hanger? No, oh, yeah, the, no, the thing that Martha's doing. Oh, the though. state seal? Is it the, the, town's the town seal. crest? Yeah, town's she said crest. crest. That's right, crest. The crest has the something new. And uh, the string is something blue. And the borrowed is the hair clips because it's borrowed him from George. So there you go. That's her. So that's the four somethings. Uh, there you go. What do you think? Uh, the hair clips thing is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in the history of the world, but I'll forgive it. It's fine. Whatever. It was a way to use George in an extra scene. Uh -huh. Um, the handkerchief, obviously the minute the handkerchief existed, I said, ah, yeah. here's our something old. Who's the something that? blue as thread is so dumb. Uh -huh. Like find something better that's blue. And then what was the borrowed? Because it's the hair clips. Supposed... The hair clips. It was stupid. Yeah, hair clips. Isn't she supposed also, to wear? Why? Why? Yeah, you're supposed to wear them. Why? I cannot wait for her to be on her dress wearing the crest from Middleton. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you could put it like underneath in like the ruffles or whatever, but that didn't look like a very ruffly dress yeah. when they had it at the consignment store. Uh, yeah. What? I mean, I guess it's just on the quilt. Is that good enough? Uh, it's supposed to be on your dress, I thought. I'm yeah. not actually a, you know, specialist in this, <laughs> but I believe she's supposed to wear them I or put to. them or carry them in her bouquet. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I guess she could carry, stick them in her bouquet, but mm -hmm. I don't even know, there, bro. There. <laughs> and then, so we have, a, you have the last little thing where uh, I think it's, Grace, who says, see, Sam, the bl uh, blanket might be worth believing in after all. Well, there you go. There it story. is. And then uh, Stephanie needs a ride home, and Liam says, I'd be happy to be your personal chauffeur. So she Whatever, Liam. Hand. Whatever, Liam. <laughs> it's not like Stephanie can do better, too. You know, now I end up being like, oh, Liam's not worth it. Like, it's just, what is with the guys this season? I know. What are they doing? Is this intentional? Are we supposed to do only like Sam? Yeah, I, I feel like it. <laughs> Sam and Jared. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, but Jared, they're not using for anything like that. So then it's, it's, oh, it's so frustrating. Yeah. I don't know what happened. They're just, they're not writing them in any likable way. I don't know what They're to just do. super needy, needy men, needy men, needy men. And I mean, I love James Denton, but I, I also like other characters. Yeah. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Get them out. <laughs> Seriously. Honestly. Yeah. I'm so mad. So, so like, sad. We get a preview for next week, the big finale, and we have a surprise that something to do with Martha getting released from her position. What do you think about that? That's pretty. Um, I am furious <laughs> if Martha actually gets taken away as mayor. Like, if it's like, oh, you can't be the mayor for two days or something, right. fine. Absolutely fine. Also, fine if, like, for some reason she can't be mayor and they have to have, like, a re-election so we get to see, like, election time Martha, which is something we were <laughs> cheated out of. Yeah, because right, from right. So that will be okay with me. But if they just are like, Martha, for some reason you don't get to be mayor, I will be mad unless they resolve it in a nice way. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think they'd leave it on a cliffhanger. They haven't really ever done that with Good Witch, really. They did. They did the what first? That the first, season? first season where she was like dancing with Sam, a, like yeah, romantical, yeah, yeah. and like the other guy who disappeared was there, Ryan, and he was like Ryan. Yes, yeah. Ryan. Yeah, like, Ryan, get out of okay. here, Ryan. Like, Ryan was okay. They could have given. I would rather have him than Liam now. Oh, so much. I would rather yeah. have him than Liam. <laughs> and Phil. Yeah, Phil, Phil is the yeah. worst. And I guess and he's going to be coming back. back next episode. It's like, oh, no. We just got rid of him, you guys. We I'm just not feeling it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're good. Great. If, it, if it didn't hurt me so much, Amber, I would laugh at that. But it honestly, it causes me, like, physical pain. That These are the guys that we have. I'm so mad. I don't yeah. know why it's what we get. But yeah, they usually, then the other one, or was that the same season? I, yeah. I worry that she is going to, it is going to be a cliffhanger because yeah. if it was all like so, if it was all tied up, then why would Catherine Disher have told us there was a twist? Mm. We don't know and we'll <laughs> never know and our lives will be ruined because <laughs> they'll take my sweet Martha that. away. And oh. then if Martha's not the mayor and her husband's living in out of state, and her kids are all married and grown up. What is, what's the holding her to Middleton, you I'm guys? Amber, nothing. That's the, see, I don't, I really, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. I'm not going to get like upset about it, but I don't know what they're doing. I'm so confused. If they get rid of her, I'll be super duper mad. They're going to no, make. No, I will be too. Didn't they say Abigail's stepping in? Wasn't that it? Abigail's going to be mayor instead of Martha. Oh, I didn't, I didn't miss that part. That was in the preview? In the, there's like a description for the next one. They said Abigail's, I think, stepping in for Martha. And I don't know if they're saying, it can't be permanent. Like, it can't be. Because that would just be weird. But then if that's what they're leading up to, is Abigail being mayor, which would also be weird. I don't know. The whole thing's very odd to me. Yeah. All I know is I don't like it. <laughs> <sighs> well, we will see if that happens. It should be pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, we will be back next week for the finale to talk the finale. It'll be uh, interesting to see what happens. And uh, yeah, I guess they'll have the wedding, uh, hopefully next week. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll all see. So there you go. Let us know what you thought of this episode of all the wishes and all the the cute moments and everything like that. I actually I I thought it was a pretty sweet episode, uh, but there were I I agree with you about Liam. He was pretty pretty lame. So uh, there we go. And yeah, let us know what you guys think uh, of it and give us your comments and feedback on Twitter or uh, in the comment section. And uh, yeah, make sure that you are following us here at Home Reviews Pod uh, all over wherever you can listen to podcasts and on Instagram and on Twitter. We try to post every single day. And we had this week, my cousin Anne uh, joined me and we talked all about the different energy types uh, of, the, of the different Hallmark leading ladies. And it was really fun. It was something different. And so check that out if you really enjoy it. And then we have uh, our Christmas in July preview this week so make sure you listen to that 
And next week, we are going to be talking uh, June Brides because this weekend we have not only the, the Good Witch finale, but we have Yes, I Do, which is so exciting with Jen Lilly, who we love and have interviewed, and Marcus Rosner, who we love and have interviewed. So, <laughs> Yeah, it's just basically like Hallmarky's podcast reunion day <laughs> on Hallmark Channel. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've interviewed Catherine Disher. This is just so exciting. So, <laughs> Georgia, are you excited for this one? I am. Honestly, I was like, what is this? I hadn't heard anything about it. Well, I'd heard about um, who was working on it, but I didn't know it was premiering so soon. And then I yeah. saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? So yeah, I am rather excited. Well, I just love it because like, it's such a meta thing to have Marcus Rosner playing this guy who's been left at the altar twice. <laughs> and now is the third time because that's like his character in yeah. all his Hallmark movies is to be rejected when he proposes. And so I think it'll be really fun uh, for, and I mean, Jen Lilly is the best. So, mm -hmm. and Chrissy Will Wolf is the best. So I, I'm really excited for it. And uh, so we'll be live tweeting that and talking about it and uh, yeah, and the good witch. So it's an exciting weekend. And so make sure you're checking out the podcast and checking out homework channel. Uh, and um, thanks so much. And Amber, where can people find you? As always, I'm at Amber Brainwaves on Twitter and that's it. Great. And Georgia? Right on here. Twitter and Instagram, I'm Georgia speech, Georgia, like the state speech, the word and all one. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. Please check it out. I would really appreciate it. doing a lot of coverage on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom on my channel. So check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. And yeah, make sure you're following us and we will talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.